I'm the man. Are you good? Alright. Hey, welcome to Fireside Technique. I'm Jake. That's Jeff. If you've followed our show long, you know Jeff. It's three? Probably three appearances? You and Nick were on one. Oh, three, yeah. And then we did one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's the third, yeah, third yeah. time of the show. This was a little different, though. This is just going to be a technique episode. We're going to talk to Jeff a little bit about prints. Uh, he owns, runs Southern Cross Press and does some really nice, high quality prints that we'll clip in. And you'll be able to see like that. Uh, so, uh, so real quick, just if if I were to um, have a, uh, if I were to make a piece of art and want to get a print made, and I ran to FedEx Kinkos and had a copy made, and I sent uh, a, raw, a raw file to Side Cross Press, what is what are the differences? What am I getting? What are the well, the major difference between just getting like a photocopy or just like a digital print that's made from a toner based printer or copier is the, the color accuracy uh, and the longevity of the print and also the paper that's used because uh, a toner based printer can't print on fine art paper. Not not that kind of paper anyways. You, you can print on 2D paper and, and have it look good but it's it's not anywhere near the same when it comes to how long the print's going to last and, and, and making the print look exactly like the original painting. You just have almost zero control. Um, like a digital, a digital printer or press that you would have at, at, at Kinko's or Staples or any other kind of copy center mainly uses CMYK for four colors. And so those four colors have to be used to reproduce the whole gamut of, of making uh, a painting, which it's, it's almost impossible for it to do that. So a fine art printer that we use to do G-Clays with is basically CMYK Plus, and it adds uh, four to six more colors on top of, of cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, which is what CMYK stands for, if someone doesn't know. Um, so it gives you a much wider color gamut to be able to reproduce a painting. So the way that it usually works, you had mentioned emailing a file. You can do that, but I don't, I don't have the original to look at then. So whoever's doing the printing, they really need to have the original. Also, they need to have control over how it's either photographed or scanned. So, so really what I usually do is would have, have the original painting, someone either ship it to me, or if they're local, they can bring it by to me. But plenty of people ship them. Uh, and then I'm either gonna photograph it or scan it, and I have full controller, control over the color calibration there to make sure it's as accurate as possible. And then I do proofs, adjust the colors, print, until it looks, you know, for the most part, identical. You know, within reason, it's like 95%. You know, right. close. So you're doing you're doing test prints on your own, comparing it side by side with the original. Exactly. And, making adjustments. And, and, and there's a lot that goes into it, just like the lighting. Like where I'm doing the printing, I have to have controlled lighting, which is like basically like 5,500 Kelvin daylight, and I have to have control that because anytime, like let's say I did that. The, that proofing under standard tungsten lighting. Then once I get it outside or in a regular lighting, like in someone's shop or something, it's going completely different. So you have to. There's a lot that goes into that, like the lighting that's that I have on the painting whenever I photograph it. And this applies to anyone that does like fine art printing and, and photographing. But uh, a lot of people will will photograph their paintings on their own or, or try to scan them on their own, but they don't have. They don't have all those tools, and they don't have like the controlled environment. They can, if, if you want to. You just, just there's a lot that goes into this all. Right. You use the term G, uh, G clay. We've G heard clay. that a lot. But what does what does that mean? What is, what is G clay? So G clay is uh, G clay is a French word that stands that, that means to spray. So that's what an inkjet printer does. It actually sprays microscopic drops of ink onto paper or canvas. So that's where the term comes from. So what G clay means is that uh, you're using archival inks, inks. So it has to be an archival inkjet printer uh, that's made for fine art printing. And that you're using archival paper. Uh, so 
the idea is that your print is 100% archival. Like the papers and inks we use are rated at at least 200 years. So well beyond any of our lifetime, that, that print should be around. In some cases, the print might actually look better and be around longer than the original, especially when you're talking about watercolors, because I think a lot of people don't realize, but half of the Dr. Martin's watercolors that are out there are, are not light fast. They're, anytime they get any kind of exposure to sunlight, they, they fade immediately. Some things, if you have them in direct sunlight, can be almost completely gone in as little as two weeks. Wow. So, like, and, and they'll say that, like, uh, on the watercolor, whenever it's like that. They, they say that it's not, it's made for, for reproduction paintings, but lots of tattooers don't realize that. So they do these paintings, and then they sell them, and if someone doesn't realize it and hang it in sunlight, it ends up, you know, yeah, especially lighter colors, like light pinks and yellows and oranges. But, so in that instance, like, a print can last, you know, infinitely longer than the original sometimes. Yeah, yeah. You know? Uh, so as far as developing the expertise, I, I mentioned the difference in going to you or going to Kinko's. It's really a, like a craft to to set up and print and you yeah. know, adjust, not just lighting, but adjust uh, uh, color temperatures or whatever. And you're doing that all in like digital software and like Photoshop and things like that? Or? Yeah, plugins for Photoshop. Uh, so there's software that's specifically made for art reproduction and fine art printing. Uh, there's also a whole hardware suite that allows us to uh, read the color on printed paper and on the monitor. So it's a, it's a color spectrometer and, and that has software that goes on the computer. So there's a whole thing that goes into it. It's basically like scanning the colors on the monitor, scanning the colors on your, your paper, and then you can write custom color profiles that allow you to to print exactly what you see on the monitor. But yeah, then there's going back and forth and adjusting those colors, you know, looking at the proofs, comparing it to the original under controlled lighting. Um, and then there's calibrating of the camera and the scanner. So part of that whole suite is, is uh, uh, they call it a target, but it's basically a piece of paper that's uh, printed with colors that, that are printed perfectly from the factory, so they're set colors. Gotcha. And then the computer software knows exactly what those colors are supposed to be. So if I'm photographing the painting and I have that target on there, I'm able to to read what the camera's picking up and adjust that to be exactly what it's supposed to be. Uh, okay. So some of it's a little, it's almost kind of automated if you have the equipment and yeah. have the software. But there is a lot of like, just knowing what to do. Uh, and it's been a process of, almost nine years of doing it uh, just really for myself and for friends but it's taken me that long to kind of perfect it down to to a smooth uh, you know a smooth process from beginning to end where I know exactly what it's gonna look like right. uh, and I know you do you're doing a lot of printing for tattooers and a lot of uh, tattooers do most a lot of the tattoos. Most of the tattoos, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and they do a lot of uh, typically a lot of very clean traditional kind of uh, stuff that's almost, you do a lot of, kind of like vector based, very clean yeah. uh, images. What about um, painters, fine art, maybe oil painters that are you know, yeah. trying to, so you can mimic, uh, you can mimic uh, what you see in a glazed oil painting as well? Anything. If you're dealing with the right person that's making your prints, uh, they should be able to handle all of that. So. Like I deal with canvas, uh, with uh, oil on board that's varnished. So you've got, it, you know, whenever you're talking about oil painting that's multiple layers, you're talking about not only like what's on the surface, it's like the painting is inside there. Right. So, so you have to be able to capture all of that. And then if you're talking about a glossy surface, now you have to deal with uh, the reflections and the lighting that's, that's shining off that. So we can handle all of that. If you have an oil painting that's varnished on canvas, we have controlled lighting that actually cancels out the tooth of the canvas or the, the glare from the lighting. And uh, we're able to essentially flatten that surface out when we photograph it. So yeah, uh, one of the things on the table is an oil painting on canvas that I had done from uh, I think I did it last year or the year before, but uh, that was photographed and printed. You can print it on canvas, like to reproduce like what the original looks like. But I prefer watercolor paper. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you can pretty much handle anything. Huh. Where, if people are interested in having to do prints, where do they find you? Uh, 
online, Instagram, southerncrosspress.com. Uh, there's uh, tons of information on what we can do and basic idea of pricing. Uh, if someone's really interested in getting prints or books made, because we also do sketchbook printing and binding, uh, yeah. uh, you can send us an email and tell us more about exactly what you're wanting to do, and we can give you a more accurate quote than what's on the website, which is just a general pricing. Yeah. But be prepared, ideally, to, to send the original word in if you want the best result. It's the best. If you're wanting prints and you're not in Texas or in Austin near us, if you don't want to send the painting or maybe you have a high resolution scan and you don't have the original anymore, I will have people that email that to me. It's just, I don't know what the original looks like, so I kind of have to trust on what the original scan looks like and just reproduce it the best I can basically make it look good but if I can't see the original uh, you know it's it's a little bit of a you know kind of a crapshoot on whether or not that's gonna be exact yeah. but people do it all the time and I mean I'm fine with it yeah. uh, it's better if we've got the original like I really feel like that's the better way to go for fine art printing yeah, yeah. Okay. awesome southerncrosspress.com if you guys are interested in having prints made they're really high quality I'm going to try to get Jeff to send us some uh, photos of his actual setup which is pretty impressive uh, and maybe we can clip those in or have been clipping those in through this um, Southern Cross Press at Southern Cross Press for Instagram tattooimprovement.com sign up for our newsletter that's it bye